My name is Yusuf Ibrahim, I'm the CEO of Headworks Bourbon Saloon. I also own Porsche Eat Out Around also, where you eat chips, chicken and chips, shawarma and other minor foods like that. My name is Rita Ame Agbonrai, the CEO of Amen House of Beauty. My name is Ayadele Lai Kaimano, CEO Zimo Bikata. I'm Motari, CEO of Motari's Beauty Empire. Oh, yeah, I was fortunate enough to graduate with a very good grade. But finishing school and then after service, there was no job around. So I thought, okay, why we're we waiting? Why not get something we could do? I looked around. I always had a passion for business, but the money to do business was not there. But along the line, it took me about three years after graduation to set up my first business. And what took that time was because of money particularly, because the setup cost, even though it seemed relatively low, it was not just available for a graduate to be able to save up that kind of amount of money. But luckily enough, I was able to save that money up. Starting up wasn't that easy for me. I wasn't having any capital when I actually started. The little money I had with me after school, I decided to put up a program to organize a program that would attract people to make up artistry and skill. So from there, you know, I came from a family where where most of us are independent, and you know, I I grew up with this notion that I, I I don't have someone to depend on. I just have to get something, you know, for myself. And when I got into school, I I, I was studying, and I I I I had this, you know, behind behind my heart that I, I was gonna, you know come up with something, you know, and then get get on with it. So w when I graduated, I it was not difficult for me to start up a business that I was passionate about. So th that was what actually propelled me to start what I'm doing. I started doing business when I was in my own level. Then I started with hand beats. I'll make these hand beats and sell to students in school. Sell, sell to my compound people then in school. I'll go from house to house to go and sell stuff. So then I was not like, okay, actually this 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 uh, beat making is not really fetching me a lot of money, and the demand for me actually then was very high. So I had to like do something else. So I went into selling of um, on this. I started selling boxers, panties, bra, and stuff. Then actually, as of like two years later, I was like, okay, I really want to go into something that I, I know I love, something I really want to do. Then I decided to go into makeup. The first thing we do is to have the beauty to your life, not just your face. If you're going to be trained as a makeup artist in Amen House of Beauty, we just added beauty to your life by giving you a skill. Outside putting food on your table, the skill that can also beautify people and make people happy. So if you're going for an occasion and you're looking very beautiful, it adds value to you, makes you happy. And by the process of making people happy, you're also getting paid for what you do. So basically it's to make people happy and add value to people's life. There yeah, are public salons everywhere. But more and more people are becoming aware of quality of service delivery. And before now, an average barber is seen as just anybody. You hardly, if you see a graduate on a barbing salon walking, you almost ask why. And then the salons around Gogolada where there is a campus, a population of a lot of people who are at least middle class and upper class, there were a lot of them. And then the salons around that you see, the barbers there, they hardly had this professional touch to barbing. And then you see that at the end of the day, most of them, when they cut your hair, they just want to shave the hair off your head and then you leave. What it is that actually differentiates the haircut you have at my salon 
from other salons is what I see as a solution I've been able to bring into the game. To a large extent, I believe I've upped the game a little because now you see people comparing salons with mine. I may not have all the customers around, but frankly speaking, I believe almost all the salons around that were top-notch before in their class have tried to at least step up their game to see how they'll compete with what is now the new trend. A lot of people come in here to Before I started, I think um, the the only clothing brand I knew in Guagalada was um, Vodi, a very big brand today, Vodi, Vodi shirt makers. And then there were a couple of tailors within Guagalada, but but they were uh, independent tailors that you just you just run up to and and then you you you, you take your fabrics there and then they, they sew for you. But, but, but I came up with the idea whereby you could reach people one-on-one. -on -one. You could do your know, home delivery. You know, you could you could you could get um, clothes sewn without even going to, to meet the tailor. I, I did more of um, um, uh, meeting people's need wherever they are, not minding where they are. It, it was it was not easy for me, but 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 I think from my own you know knowledge, I've been able to. You know, you know, re rebrand cloth making. My salon alone employs at least five people. The chip and chicken and chip joint employs about five also. So, putting that together, we have about ten staff strength, and then the ice cream shop. When it comes up, we will have about four staffs also. Put that together, we we'll have a number of about. 14. Then myself, I won't say I'm not employed. I'm also employed there. I'm the biggest beneficiary of the job business. So I will say that with that, that's 15 people. If we grow and we have more branches, more people will come into it. All these people, they pay their bills themselves. They pay for accommodation by themselves. They feed well. Yeah, if they get better jobs, they'll leave. But they are currently employed. Some of them, their younger ones, at least my barbers, about three of them have come up with people who have come to learn under them. For the past three years, we have at least seven to ten people come learn how to cut hair from our salon. Those people have been empowered to go ahead. And we don't usually charge them, we just motivate them so that at least they'll be ambassadors of our brand somewhere. I would say since I started, I've been able to employ like five people that have been working for me and most of them they are graduates and secondly i there are some people that is just hair stylists or they are into hair styling they want to add makeup to their skill just to improve and increase their cash flow so i also teach them take them on this skill and by doing that you've added value to their business and their lives so i've been able to employ like three people working for me for now Seven years in the trade now, I've, uh, I think over, over, over 14 workers have worked, you know, with the brand. Some, some came, they left, and I know one or two that are doing very, very well today. You know, I, during the course of these years, I've been able to employ, some leave because they want to start their own brand, some because probably want to relocate. So I, basically, it, it has really, and I, I see people coming every day that they want to, you know, they, they, they want to be employed. But I, there, are, there are factors that I consider before employing. So I think basically it has really helped, you know, you to get jobs around, especially in the, in in this, you know, municipal environment. Yeah, At the micro level where we operate, we are in Gogolada, within this environment. I would say yes. Why? Because if we take it larger, it might be difficult to identify our footprints in the marks of economics. But within Gogolada particularly, since we started over the last three years, we know that there are several youths that have found it encouraging that if a graduate can go into this business and he is doing this good, it means that there's prospects in it. And it means that going to school because there's this notion that why should I go to school because if I finish school there's no job waiting for me there's no way I'll go to make a living 
But when people come around and they see the example that this guy is a graduate and then he has a salon, mm -hmm. they are able to identify the fact that it's because he is a graduate that his salon is probably better than other salons around. And because of that, a lot of people are going into similar ventures. On the street where my business is located, the chicken and chips venture, somebody else is doing Indomie on a lower scale than mine. I don't feel threatened. I feel like somebody is emulating my business. And then down opposite the campus, somebody else also has a business. About five of them have sprung up after mine. I see these people as emulating my business and then they are not they are not actually trampling or they are not eroding my space the sky is enough for all of us to thrive and move on that level i think yes we have contributed to diversifying because we have made a lot of people to leave the neck of government they will break this government eventually if everybody waits for government so many people now that are waiting for government are actually knowing that we can still do something To young people out there, the worst advice you can get from anybody is somebody telling you that Bill Gates did not go to school, or that Steve Jobs did not go to school, Mark Zuckerberg went dropped out of when we hear all this, it's embarrassing. It's intellectually deriding. The best that can happen to any young individual is for you to be armed with quality academic qualification. It's it distinguishes you from a lot of people. If a graduate is selling a car on the street, and somebody who went to secondary school is selling a car on the streets, there will be that distinction to show that this is different from this person. Because your approach to selling a car, how about for four years you go through school, you would have learned how to package yourself. You'll have toasted a girl once or twice. You'll have needed to smart up once or twice. And that will give you this default approach to packaging yourself. So as a young individual, don't be deceived to think that school is a waste. I swear to you, school is very important and it distinguishes your approach to running business. If you want to start a business, you have to be ready. You have to count the cost because it's more, you should be more disciplined when, you're, when you own your own business. You need high level of discipline for your business. Once you want to own a business, you don't just run it like no man's business. You run with high level of discipline and commitment. So if you want to own a business, be ready to be committed, be ready to be disciplined. Discipline has to cover a lot of things. Discipline with finance, discipline with your way of life, discipline with what you think about, discipline with the people you relate with if you don't have like minds. So discipline has to cover all those parts. So for me, I would say you have to be ready, discipline, be focused and be committed to what you really love to do. Get to know about what you want to do very, very well. Read about, get books that, 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 that has to do with your line. Read about, about what you intend, intend doing. And then if you, if you need browse, browse about it, read at length. Something that other people can follow.